Well, I'm going to talk to the couple of people who are here. God, I hate talking to mics. Um, do I need this mic? Can I just... I'm going to talk to the mic because no, I just don't like it, and, and we don't seem to have enough people to justify it. I can turn it off. Could you do that? Yeah, that's fine. If, if more people show up, then I'll ask for it back. But right now the echo is bothering me. Hi. Hi. <laughs> yeah, see that works just fine. Okay, so uh, well, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Tamara Bond. I'm with the Society of Satellite Professionals International which is the Professional Development Society for the Global Satellite Industry. And I had a couple of cute slides, but uh, at least the first one's really not gonna apply, but I'll show it to you anyway. This is, of course, University of Arizona. And that is my kid. So, he is a freshman in college for the first time. He's actually not studying engineering or anything related to satellites or space. He's studying architecture. But uh, I just showed that on account of that I'm really exceptionally proud of him uh, because he spends all his days doing schoolwork, first year of college, and not other thing that he could be doing. And likewise, I'm very proud of all the said students here. We're here. It's pretty amazing to me. <laughs> so, well, this slide here was supposed to actually be um, links. Yeah. They were, which are entirely invisible. <laughs> there, there used to be some visibility of these links, and they're, they're not visible right this minute. But, ah, so we were talking about Sandy. And I wanted to talk a little bit about Sandy just because A, it had a lot of impact on why uh, I'm such a last minute addition to this 345 slot because my schedule is back kind of thrown off by Sandy. And, but the other thing, of course, is that I'm here to talk a little bit about the satellite industry and just how impactful it is uh, and how much of a difference it makes. And so, of course, here we have the European Space Agency tracking this massive storm via satellite imagery. And if you can check another one. another story coming out of the satellite industry and this is a story I can't read it. Oh, well this one I think is about uh, studies where they were able to actually track population uh, uh, growth and specifically there was a mega city uh, that they were able to track and say well this is how cities develop this is how they sprawl all over the place but they were able to see this just in terms of human activity from space, from satellites. And go one more. And this one is about the spread of disease. Uh, so, uh, and how doctors are able to use satellite imagery to track people, movement, infections. Um, there's another one that was about measles, and I don't think I captured that one. The point here really is that there are useful applications of space that apply to our everyday life today, even more and beyond our everyday applications of watching TV and following our little GPSs around on our handheld. There are useful applications to satellites. It is the most useful application of space today. It is making money today. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the organizations, SSPI, which is promoting that satellite industry, and to encourage students who are excited about space to think about satellites. So if I can go back to my presentation. Thank you. We're clicking? Yeah, just a second. Maybe not so much. Can you guys still hear me? Because I've turned off the mic. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, so what is SSPI? We are a nonprofit that member benefit society that serves satellite professionals throughout their entire careers, and that includes 
at the student stage. Uh, we promote the development to and access, development of and access to satellite related education. We help satellite professionals advance their careers, recognize and celebrate individual achievement in the industry, and of course we are actively excited about engaging in the promotion of the industry and stimulating growth in the industry. So I'm going to pause here. I have a whole bunch of slides, but just listening to all the presentations today just kind of just kind of took me in a whole other direction, and I won't get back on track. But we were talking uh, earlier today in the lunch and keynote a little bit about how you have to fight to make your vision happen um, for settlement of space. It's very, very lofty, really kind of far off, but it's doable. It's achievable. But how do we do it? And there's lots of questions about that. There's a lot of answers. There's a lot of ideas. Amongst them will certainly be satellite communications. Certainly, we're not going to send anybody where we can't talk to them. And the most likely way that we're going to talk to them is by satellite. Certainly, we're going to have to think about powering our vehicles to travel through space. Some of the technologies that we're thinking about in satellite today are powering satellites and directing solar energy from the sun via satellite to back to Earth, but also to vehicles that are already out in space. So we have an opportunity to think about space exploration in terms of very practical things that are going on right now today in the world, applications and technologies that we have today, that we're able to implement today, we can do it now, and we can make money from it now, and we can build the technology now that allows us to be able to think about building for the future. Um, the last presentation they used, um, my colleague Alex Sultan used the word commoditization, which is a great word. Uh, really what it means to me is we can make money off of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the satellite industry right now today is making money. So, who is SSPI? I'm back from friend. We are involved with issuing scholarships and programs to uh, various Sunday students, and I'm happy to say that we will be issuing a scholarship today at the bank. I'm really excited about that. Last year when I was here, I was, I was announcing that we would be having this relationship. We're building our relationship with SEDS, uh, whereby what we're hoping to do is year over year, through a memorandum of understanding that we built out with SEDS, that we create a linkage between the students and the commercial, commercial sector so that you have the availability of mentorship, you have the availability of expertise of commercial, the commercial industry to be able to work on projects that are relevant and may be of interest to you and to the commercial industry. And so through that relationship, we are eagerly looking forward to promoting student involvement with the satellite industry. We uh, have our own chapters, and so that's another place where we're looking for development. And I'm sorry that I don't have a whole bunch of students here, but I'll say this again at the banquet that I'm eagerly looking forward to meeting with some of the Northeast chapter students here because my Northeast chapter of SSPI is a little bit more fun right this minute, and I'm really hoping that I can work with some students to kind of. I can't say that quite, I won't say it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yes. So um, we also host uh, a number of uh, public events, uh, networking events, uh, biggest event in the industry, our annual gala that happens in March, but also a really amazing event that's getting ready to happen next week, which is our Future Leaders Dinner, which is honoring professionals in the industry under the age of 35, as well as mentors who have been in the industry a while and who have made it their passion to work with young people coming into the industry. And so I'm very excited about that and I'm excited about the fact that we are developing a culture of mentorship in our organization and that there is an opportunity that this benefits the students who are here. And of course, as I said, throughout, uh, throughout our organization at all of our events, we always are honoring the achievements. So we are the host of the Hall of Fame, Satellite Industry Hall of Fame, honoring um, such people as, um, okay, just, Frank, 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 Frank,
but uh, okay, I'm going to say uh, Van Allen. I'm going to say um, Arthur C. Clarke, that's the name I was trying to get, <laughs> who is actually, of course, the founder of the satellite industry. This slide is actually dated. It says we have 2,800 individual members. That's actually low. We have about, I would say, 3,500 right now. Members across the world. Most of our members are still here in the United States, but that is diversifying. Uh, we have chapters. Well, I thought I was going to talk about chapters, not so much. <laughs> okay. We have a number of corporate sponsors. Our corporate sponsors are professional companies and commercial companies in this industry. Some of whom you've been hearing about, Boeing and SpaceX and such, and a list of some of them. These are the major satellite companies in the industry. Our, our association brings together every aspect of the industry. So if we're talking about launching satellites, if we're talking about building them, if we're talking about managing them, if we're talking about the, talking to them, every aspect of the satellite industry is represented through the Society of Satellite Professionals. And every aspect of this industry is in need of the talent represented in this room. Chapter slide. So, yes, we have chapters all over the world. That was the whole point of the slide. Oh, I talked a little bit about our annual gala and our awards program. So, I want to bring your attention to this slide here. This is our uh, new publication. It's about a year and a half old now. Uh, we just had a reprint of it. It is available online currently. Uh, it is available free to universities as a desk copy. You can have each university can request a single copy for free for their libraries. But what this is, this is called Liftoff, Careers in Satellite, the world's first and most successful space industry. And we are showing through this book uh, career paths. How do you get involved in the space industry if you want to make money, if you want a job in this industry? There's, there's a lot of ways to be involved, but the biggest path, career path, is within the satellite industry. Launching, building, talking to them, uh, every aspect. This is our biggest path, broadcast. You know, uh, when we want to talk about broadcast and being able to communicate from one point to all over the globe, we are talking about satellite technology. And so I want to encourage everyone here, not only to get this copy for yourself, but uh, please promote this, and I will, of course, talk about this again. On our website, we also have opportunities for people to learn a little bit about uh, how other people got started. And this is just a little kind of a fun thing that we've done. We kind of talk to people in the industry and say, well, how did you get started? And so some leading lights in the industry, uh, the CEO of Viasat, Sue Irwin, who's our chairman and emeritus of our board, uh, Sydney Tobol, who's a Hall of Famer, uh, lots of folks who are really very key in the industry talks about how they got started, how they went from being folks like you and shares like this to being executives in top watch companies. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. We have a YouTube channel that's another invisible link. Can I have that? Yeah. Okay, well anyway, we have a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to see, so I apologize. But uh, this gentleman that you see here, Mr. Rich Wolf, who is a uh, chairman of uh, vice, senior vice president of satellites, and something, something, something at ABC Television. Um, he is being honored this Tuesday as the mentor of the year. So we're very honored to be able to recognize that and him. The fact that someone at that level of uh, expertise achievement takes the time to talk to young people entering the industry for the first time and helping them and directing their careers. You can go back. That's my whole slide presentation. So I went through that really quickly just because we're here and I just want to kind of open myself up to any kind of conversation that we want to have. I think that's a little more useful. Um, but I really, you know, I am here really to talk a little bit about the fact that, as I said, we have opportunities today to 
inviting them to come, or if we have, uh, for instance, this year's winner of the satellite prize that we'll be, a, we'll be awarding at the banquet, I'm going to be inviting them to come down to our annual deal in March. But more importantly, they'll be also being given three conference passes to the satellite show, 
this has happened over the course of three days in DC. It's the biggest show of the industry, and it's a great, great, great learning opportunity. Now, to walk around and meet people, come to your cousins, whatever makes sense. But it's just a really, a really nice kind of way to see just the vastness of what's actually out there in terms of opportunity to work in space right now, today. So. I'm just stretching. Okay. <laughs> More? Yeah. yeah. Um, I noticed there's a dot in New York City. Is there a, what are you affiliated with there? There's a what in New York City? A dot a, on your map, you have a chapter? Yes, a we have a chapter. Well, let me rephrase that. We have a chapter that's called the Northeast Chapter, and right. it's centered in New York. Okay. Most of our activities for that chapter in New York. Um, again, because it's a volunteer organization, chapters are more or less active or inactive depending on the level of volunteerism. And right now, our chairman of that Northeast chapter is unfortunately going through personal hardship, and so a little inactive and having to kind of jumpstart a little bit. So else we've been here with the delegation instead of just me. But um, what we're hoping to do, as I said, is we're hoping to be able to say, so this is where we think that we have some activities that our local chapters here, Northeast Sense chapters, would like assistance from. And in that way, we can reach out for volunteers from the Northeast chapter of SSPI and have them come and participate. And likewise, when SSPI has events, uh, local chapter events, of course, students are welcome. It's a great learning experience. Sometimes they do such things as take tours of facilities and listen to lectures about what know, upcoming and different and challenging facing the industry. So very much like this, but on a local level. So it's a great opportunity to kind of meet people, network, start building your network of connections as you start thinking about your career. And it's open to everyone. So there's no affiliation with the local school? No. Okay. No. It's just a kind of a map between SEDS chapters and SSPI chapters. Are you familiar with the Dr. Phoenix program? Yes. Okay. Vaguely familiar. I, mean, I, I myself am not a professional right. technology professional, so. Do you have any thoughts about it? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, but I'm sure that there, you know, there are there are professionals who do. So if you have interest and you want to be connected with some satellite folks in the industry, uh, you can talk to that. I can 